Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design. So we are going to go over the CCS debugger in this video. The debugger is a tool which allows you to basically inspect what's going on with your program execution at a very low level. So it allows you to pause your program at various points within your code and go in and look at the values that are stored in some of the computer hardware. So you can look at the values of the CPU register, you can look at values in data memory, you can look at the opcodes and operands in program memory, you can look how constants were set up in program memory. And when you program in C, it'll actually allow you to view the dis an assembly file that's created. So you'll actually see what mnemonics and what instructions that the compiler generated for your high level program and see if it's close to what you wanted, okay? All right, so here's how we're going to do this. We are going to start Code Composer Studio, and we're going to bring up the project that we did last time, uh, the Blinky one. And then we are going to open that up, and we'll run through a debug session, and we're going to cover some of the most common tools that you are going to use, uh, and then you'll be familiar with the terminology and how they work. Okay, so here is my, here is my CCS. And up here I see in Project Explorer, I have my project from last week. And if I double click on it or expand it, I can see my main.asm. And so I go ahead and bring that up. This is the program that we wrote last time to make the LED blink. We don't know how it works yet. So let's go ahead and start off by hitting the debug button. This is gonna assemble it, link it, create the executable object file and download it into the program memory of the MCU on the launchpad board. And we are off and running. Okay, so I have my board plugged in, <clears throat> obviously. And what I'm gonna do now is I wanna make sure that this is actually running. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna hit resume. And, I'll, and my program is running. Okay, so I got this, this is blinking. <laughs> so this is great. If I suspend it using this pause button, what happens is that I can actually freeze it at a specific moment within, uh, within the program, but when I suspend it, I don't really know where I'm at. So if I hit play again, it's running, and then I, I pause it, and it'll stop somewhere. I don't really know where. If, and what's cool about it is once it's suspended, you can actually go and look at the values that are in registers and in memory, and that's an important point. It has to be an active debug session and it has to be suspended. This button right here is for a termination of the debug session. So if I hit stop, that's gonna completely exit me out of the debug session and <clears throat> I no longer can view anything with respect to the CPU registers and the memory. So I have to be in an active debug session and I have to be suspended in order to see what I wanna see when in the debug. Okay, so that's the big concept of these first three buttons. Okay, so you resume, suspend, and terminate. Now, we usually wanna stop at a, a location in our code that we control. We don't just wanna have it run, and you know, it's, it's executing millions of instructions per second. We don't want it to just randomly land when we press the button. So we need a way to, to control when it actually breaks or when it's gonna stop. And we do that with this concept of a breakpoint. So I'm gonna come down here, and what I'm gonna do is I can come down, and before any instruction, I can insert a breakpoint by coming over into this little gray bar and double clicking. And notice that this little blue ball appears right there. What that means is that <clears throat> the program is gonna run until it sees that, and then it's gonna suspend. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit run, and it's gonna to run to that breakpoint, and it's gonna stop. So now at this moment in time, it has stopped. And notice that the, the LED is on. The way that our program works is that this is the instruction that toggles the LED. Then it goes in th into a delay loop and then it comes back. So if I actually hit run again, it should toggle off the LED and then stop. And it did. So it's, it's going through this loop, you know, 65,000 times. And then it comes back up here and it stops before it toggles. So I can actually just hit this and make the LED come on and off. And so that's pretty cool. I know where I'm at and life is good. Okay, so at this point, that's, that's a breakpoint. And if you want to disable a breakpoint, you just double click on it again, and then I can hit run and now the breakpoint is gone, okay? All right, so let me, let me suspend 
And I want to put this breakpoint back in there in front of the exclusive or, and then I'm going to run to it. Okay. Now we have suspended and we can actually start viewing the contents of various things. So let's take a look at the CPU registers. Okay, so I'm going to come down here and if I come over into, into this box right here, I'm going to see variables, expression, registers. If you don't see this, if you don't see any of the tools that I see, you come into view and you'll be able to see all these different tools. And sometimes they get turned off. Some, like if I turned off registers, well, view registers. If I closed it accidentally, I'm like, oh, whoops, I forgot. I accidentally clicked close and I don't see it anymore. You come over here and just go view registers and it'll pop back up. You're going to see a lot of registers in here. So at the high level, you know, right away, you can kind of see ports, right? Remember how we talked about how there's port one, port two. So you can actually see these. These are registers. Uh, but we care right now about the CPU registers. CPU registers are in the core registers. And look at this. You have all the CPU registers that are in the MSP430 CPU. Notice there's 16 of them, and the first four are dedicated. They are program counter, stack pointer, status register, and then R3, which is, it's used for, we don't use it, it's constant generator. But R4 is used, and R4, if you remember, is our counter variable. And if you just remember the way that this program works is we needed a delay loop and we needed a way to actually turn on the toggle the LED and then delay for about a half a second. So we loaded a big value into R4 and then we decremented it each time. So let's go ahead and let's set a breakpoint right here and let's let's run while we're sitting in this loop. So I'm going to run and I want to see R4. So look at R4 change to FFFF and then the next time I run it it goes to FFFE and FFFD then FFFC, and this is great. I can actually see the, the variables or the CPU contents changing, and I can verify that I'm doing what I expect to do. Now, of course, you need breakpoints because this thing's going to go for 65,000 times, and so I can't sit here and click that many times in a reasonable amount of time. <laughs> so I can go ahead and disable that, and then I can go look at other things. Okay, notice another thing, uh, the program counter. The program counter, remember our program memory starts at 8,000. So you can kind of get a feel for where these instructions are located. So if I start, if I want to move through here and go through instruction by instruction, I can do something called stepping. Okay, so stepping is where you execute one instruction at a time. <clears throat> and so if I come over here, I've got step into and step over. And I'll explain the difference between them. They both work the same right now. But if I do this, Notice what's happening is that it is actually marching through program memory and it is doing something. So the, pro the program counter is tracking the address of the next op code to go get the next instruction. And you can kind of see that it's just hammering back and forth between these two instructions because it's in a loop. But this is where we actually see that. The step is a really powerful thing because you can actually run to a breakpoint and then you can step and go through the rest of the program. So let's do this. Uh, I'm going to put a breakpoint back here. So I'm going to activate that breakpoint and I'm going to run to it. Okay, so now I'm there and now let's do step. So I'm going to watch it step. Now I'm going to load register four with FFFE and then I get into there and I can see FFFE going down and I can see the program, or program counter also moving. So this is fantastic. Okay, so step is a very, very important one too. Uh, now what's the difference between step and step over? All right. Step and step over come into play when you have a subroutine. So sometimes, for example, if you have if you have like this delay loop, you might want to put it into a subroutine. And if if you don't want to go into it, what you can do is you can step over or you can step into. So step into will go into the subroutine when there's a subroutine call, and step over will just execute the subroutine and then it will. Uh, step over it and that way you, you don't have to actually like step through every single instruction that's in a subroutine so that that makes it a little bit easier to control okay so we've looked at breakpoints we've looked at the suspend and terminate and sus and resume we've looked at step and step over we've viewed the contents of of a register let's look at the last thing which is looking at the values in memory so I can actually, I'm suspended right here. I want to come over here and I want to go view and I'm going to look at the memory. So I'm going to do memory browser. And over here is going to give this memory browser thing. 
And it's really cool. The only problem is you have to enter the address you want to go to in hex. And so I'm going to go to 2000. So I'm going to type 2000. And look at this. Holy cow. So I have 2000H. <clears throat> so huge. Okay. So I'm sitting here. And... Oh, no. It's, you got to enter it as zero. Yeah. You have to enter the hex as 0x2000 instead of 2000H. You just got to get used to it. But here's program memory, excuse me, data memory. So this is actually the RAM that you have access to. And in this program, we actually don't even use it. We, we are not using anything other than the CPU registers. But this is where it would be if you cared about it. Um, let's go look at program memory. This, is, this will be interesting. So if I go to 8000, here is where my program memory is. And look at what they do. They actually put not only the opcodes and operands, the binaries for each instruction, they put the mnemonic of what's going on and also the address label. So if I come up here and I want to know what my first instruction is for, uh, for my program, it turns out it is this guy right here. So it's going to be this 4031 and that's going to correspond to uh, some moves, right? <clears throat> and that's the first instruction in here. Okay, so you got reset at 8,000. This 8,000 is this instruction and then stop. WDT is going to be at 8004. And then my init label, where I came down here, the init label is target or labeling 8000A. And then you're going to have these opcodes, which are basically corresponding to bit clear and bit set. So that's those opcodes and operands. And then when I come down to main, the main label is marking 8012. You can see that the delay label is marking. 8018 and you can actually see what is in program memory so the debugger is a super powerful tool to understand what is happening when your program isn't executing the way that you think it should be and it'll become even more important when we even when we start looking at peripherals because when you start using peripherals uh you'll start needing to go make sure their configuration memory or their configuration registers are working correctly and you can actually see all of those up here in the register viewer and then data memory, it's very important when you start dealing with different data types, you want to make sure that the, the character or whatever you put into data memory was coded the correct way. Was it a float? Was it a integer, etc.? So, okay, that is the CCS debugger. And in the slides I run through, we talked about resume, terminate, suspend. We talked about uh, what they do. We talked about viewing register contents. We talked about viewing the memory browser. We talked about <laughs> looking at data memory, program memory. We stepped over, we stepped into, and life was good. Okay, so remember that, well, that's the end of this video. Uh, remember, subscribe to my channel so you're always up to date on the latest videos, and I'll talk to you next time.